Let me officially commission the show by welcoming you to Backpage, your new satirical show on City TV. Of course, we are live on DSTV channel 363. My name again is Caleb Kuda, and my team and I are happy to share some happiness with you. So, my friend B called and said, Onya, what is this colonial virus, colonial virus, corolla thing? I keep yelling. Hmm. From this report, my colleague Howard Jisu put together, you can tell the thing is scary. The outbreak of the novel coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, Hubei province in China on December 31, 2019. Since then, the country has recorded multiple confirmed cases, including cases outside Wuhan, with additional cases being identified in a growing number of countries internationally. At least five cases have so far been recorded in the U.S., according to CNN. According to the National Health Authority and the Wuhan Health Commission, new deaths from the coronavirus have been recorded, bringing the death toll to 106. Additionally, the number of confirmed cases has risen to about 4,400. In Africa, Ivory Coast on Saturday recorded a suspected case of a student who returned from Beijing and undergoing further test. Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa is reported to have quarantined four persons suspected to have contracted the virus. Wow! Now, my fear is once the virus originates from China, then it's original. Yeah, nobody can imitate the virus ever. For instance, assuming the original hometown of the coronavirus is, coronavirus is say, Mexico, and it is detected in the U.S., Donald Trump would have assured the world on Twitter, this is fake news, <laughs> it's made in China, and it's fake. Unfortunately, the virus is an original charger made in China. So there can't be an imitation. But some people say God loves this country so much because our markets have the potential to grow the virus as it parallels the conditions that led to the virus in the Wuhan province in China. This new virus, like those other rogue viruses, probably was first transmitted to humans from animals. Tell me, which of our markets doesn't have the potential for this virus. Is that Babuloshi or Kaneshi market or La Paz New Market? Who else has realized how our markets have some standard order B? Like if you get to a market in Ghana and that thing doesn't hit you, then the market is not standard. Any witnesses? Yeah. I mean, people are slaughtering poultry in the open air open space. They're spilling the blood in gutters and the whole thing is just nyama. So this coronavirus thing. Hmm. But, the, but the important thing is we need to know how China has responded to this crisis. Okay? Did you say, wow, now that is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. In Ghana, we would have used all kinds of adjectives, chiefs among which is unprecedented <laughs> for things that are much, much, much amaz less amazing compared to this. Meanwhile, the things we use unprecedented for, no? <laughs> none comes close to what we are seeing elsewhere. None. And guess what? After the virus has been contained, no, they will pull down what we would have cut sort for. I mean, we'll give cutting sort speech, take pictures, throw party, then after some years manage to complete phase one. That one crown contractors will ha would have cried over funds and threatened to abandon work. Then we managed to finish phase one. We commissioned it. 
by giving speech, walking around it, taking pictures, throwing party, then abandon it for some six more months until City FM people will come and make the this. Ah. Then we will give financial clearance to half the number of health workers while the others who quit their jobs waiting to be employed wait at home. <laughs> and did you see those colorful excavators? <laughs> did you say nice? <laughs> yes, they are nice. By now, they would have been packed in some politicians' backyard here in Ghana. <laughs> if you think I'm joking, ask the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology, and something, something. Apparently, <laughs> oh, Ghana is sweet. The seized excavators' government's tax force retreat from illegal miners. No. <laughs> they have vanished into thin hair. <laughs> Just like that. I mean, the minister proudly told the world that the excavators have disappeared. No one has been punished for that. But what do we see? Galamse is back in full force. <laughs> and please, you are supposed to believe the minister of the incorruptible president of the Ghanaian people. <laughs> anyway, back to coronavirus <laughs> and our Ghana story. Some hospitals have been designated for, you know, Monitoring of suspected cases, Demaze, Naze, Naze. Yeah. If a case comes to the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, let's say from tomorrow, we will be ready to receive and commence work, the, pro the protocols that we have put in place. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's an assurance. Did you see the building? It's supposed to be an isolation center. Yeah, and we are still clearing the old boxes out of it so that we can use it for proper isolation. And meanwhile, people have built... It's okay. This thing is really serious, right? And the way they say it's transferred from animals to animals, humans to humans, animals to humans, and all those things. Now, I am concerned about how we pack ourselves in our trotros and even our little people are standing inside and all that. Not forgetting those who travel long distances with their fowls and ducks, turkeys and goats that share the same space with human beings. Assuming passes our coronavirus, I mean, first I'm virus. You can imagine. I mean, we are just special people, Charlie. And the good thing is, unlike times in the past that you would find some people say, oh, we are Africans, some of these things won't kill us. No. At least some of our business people are showing that they value our lives. Anya Krano, small. Right now, all my goods are on the way. So the, the new ones I have to order, I have to stop because it's food, you know? Yes, it's food. It's, it's biscuits and toffee. So if, if there is something bad going on why should i uh, I, I, yes, I need to stop the the, the, the the importation for now because i i i can't invite sickness in, in, in into my my, my country you, you, you can't do that it's true you can't do that it's true you can't do that thank you very much we are grateful you have thought about us some others say um you know, this is a national security issue and that our national security minister should be having sleepless nights by now. But I guess his time-tested antidote to know. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Yeah, I see. How much I wish I could have hugged you. Oh, Aww. I did that day and it was so nice. <laughs> Put me to sleep immediately. Uh, a hug from me will put you to sleep, eh? The, the, the last time you did to me, didn't it put me to sleep? It did. Mm -hmm. Straight. It put you straight to sleep. In the face of national security crisis, may all sleeping giants awake. All right. So amid the threats of the coronavirus and all that, you know, one thing has happened for which our dear Honorable Minister of Health has assured His Excellency the President of the Ghanaian people that Charlie, now and dear, he will sleep. Oh, guys, give me my pajamas. <laughs> Once again, Mr. President, thank you and the Vice President for your personal commitment and ensuring that this laudable project became a success. 
Mr. President, I want to assure you that tonight I will sleep. That tonight I will sleep. That tonight I will sleep. Tonight I will sleep. Tonight I will sleep. I mean, what at all has happened that the health minister wants to sleep so badly? Well, I'll tell you. Government has not failed at all in falling over itself to throw party after party for simply importing 307 buses for purposes of an ambulance. When should we expect this in the, in the constituency? Today. Today. That's why we are here. We are moving it right now. In fact, I will, I will drive it. I, I, will, I will drive it myself to the constituency. Oh, so all the jamboree of uh, imported vehicles now. Wait. We've actually had a company in Ghana that was established 46 years ago that used to produce buses but is now at the verge of collapse. I would say now New Plan is dead. We used to have 100 workers here in Accra. Mm -hmm. We do servicing here. But for now, there's nothing going on. Okay. So what are you doing here now? We are here to maintain the machines. Okay. So the machines are working? The machines are working, but there's no work. Okay. New Plan is, the verge, is, is on the verge of collapse. Well, the man says it is dead. That means these imported ambulances that give people procurement benefits, Krana, they could have been made here if this new plant thing was running. But no, we have destroyed ours and we are jubilating over the conversion of our city to hard currency to import ambulances. And the wisdom in this is that it will strengthen our city in the process and people come and speak plenty English. But please, please, please. Allow us to celebrate small. Now, our opponents, you know, they got F9. We managed to get F8. I mean, some of the uh, naysayers and some uh, stakeholders are saying that the fanfare around this was not needed. What do you say to that? That is their opinion, right? What do they mean by fanfare around this is not needed? Yes, sir. This man promised the nation he will do this. He has done it. So people should not know what he has delivered. That is his style, and that is our style. We'll take our time to deliver, and we we'll showcase to the nation what we have done. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Please keep delivering. Now, look, all jokes aside, if we have to celebrate the importation and deployment of ambulances after 63 years of independence, then, ah, uh, well... Imagine that after calling the government heartless, insensitive, bra bra bra, for postponing the commissioning of the ambulances, the minorities ranking member on the health committee, Kwamna Menta Kano, could not say, "Oh, government, at least you force. Hey, we, you have done what we couldn't do." <laughs> the day that thing was being commissioned, he went to some empty fridges John Mahama imported. <laughs> To show Ghanaians some agree dramatic. <laughs> These vans were procured by the, tax, the taxpayers' money. And I believe that it can be used to save lives in this country. But again, we have packed these vans for more than three years. And people need them in the hinterlands. And it's quite disheartening. Oh, would you? <laughs> Now, I'm tempted to think that when the Ododododio constituents were dancing to Ofecho, they were dancing in loving memory of the previous government. <laughs> Minority moment, uh, yeah, difficult. Opposition is hard. When there is hunger, your hunger is special. Well, the ambulances are gradually arriving at the various consequences. 
we are told that the ambulances will march through the streets to the regional ministers. So the, the regional ministers will inaugurate. Then the MCUs will inaugurate. DCUs will inaugurate. And just maybe assemblymen will have a chance to also inaugurate before finally the ambulance center people can start running the thing. We just pray food soldiers won't wrestle the ambulances from the hands of the professionals. Until then, the everyday, everyday Ghanaian is quite happy. Hmm. You have got your ambulance. We thank God for your lives. We hope that you maintain it well so that it doesn't come with consequences. Now, many are impressed, others are not. But the thing is, if one man in search of political power can procure 270 buses for constituencies in a bid to become party chairman, how does government inaugurating 307 ambulances become such a great achievement compared only to our independence? Anyway, here is the president presenting ambulances to some MPs of interest. Some joy. Come for your ambulance. Come. Come. Ambulance. <laughs> no, I mean, the opposition MPs who say they don't like the ambulance. If you like, donate your ambulance to your nearby constituencies. <laughs> like you now. <laughs> You will see your smoothness level on December 7th. But the Volta Regional Minister, though, people say he's President Kufado's 20. Like, basically, the two of them are cute, all right? He has been opening fire on all people who dared criticize his recommissioning of the ambulances in the Volta region. So when the president performs a commissioning ceremony, at the national level, the people of Ghana, many of whom might not have watched on television, might not have read newspapers, also need to know what has happened. And when ambulances have been allocated to Volta region, there is nothing wrong with the ambulances coming to the coordinating council for us to receive them and hand them over to be taken care of by the assemblies. Anybody who criticizes this has a problem. And we need to take him to synagogue for deliverance. <laughs> no, some cute men can open fire. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he said that you go for deliverance. Hey, he for me, his mouth is hard than pepper. Anyway, anyway, let's move on. The recommissioning, no? How much money go inside? Because this 2020, we need money for campaign. For so any chance for Ghana, <laughs> you, you understand? <laughs> Please have mercy on us. Why? Uh, we know you need money, but we beg. This is back page on City TV, my friends. When we return from this break here, the Minister for Roads and Highways, Terminator One, has issued a stern warning to all the lackadaisical contractors out there. Wait for it. Welcome back. This is Backpage on City TV with me, Caleb Kuda. We are recommissioning the second half of the show now. This year, let me tell you, if your roads are not done, eh, my brother, forget it. It will be like that till thy kingdom cometh. I mean, recently, I have seen some chippings spread on the roads in my area. And they are waiting for the rains to sweep everything away before they do anything about it. But for real, this election, this election year called 2020, also known as year of roads. Eh? If your roads don't see beauty, man, eh? close your mind inside, just to a dream. 
Now, even though Terminator 1 hasn't told us why the Eastern Corridor Road has stalled, as we reported the last time, now, he has given a stern warning B, to all the lackadaisical contractors out there. The speech itself is epic. Well, lie. <laughs> Anybody who would demonstrate a cadetical attitude towards this goal, towards this forward march, towards this vision of His Excellency the President, I have the moral courage and authority to set that person aside, and that person will be left behind. Either you are with us, or please, you wait for us. And whether you are a contractor, whether you are an engineer, whether you are in my ministry, if we realize that you want to slow us down, you will give way. And I have the moral authority and the courage and the courage to do it. You spoil that. But by the way, why don't you just pay the contractors and let them finish their job, man? Anyway, we have this video for you that celebrates your passion. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I have the moral authority and the courage and the courage to do it. And the courage and the courage and the courage. Either you are with us or please you wait for us. I have the moral confidence. Anyway, that's to celebrate our favorite minister on the show. I will terminate it. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> oh my God. All right, let me comport myself. So this weekend, we went out for the war against and discipline exercise. A number of things happened. Let's start from here. No, no face, listen. Am I me dropping someone on stand back? I told you I'm not on the show. No, I am a real move. Ready? I am stopping you. This is stamping. And this is the office. I was stopping you. Oh, daddy, no. Oh, yes, I know. You are not doing it fairly with me. Because this is stamping. Stamping, Kenny. And I'm going to catch you. It's not that I'm lying. I can't drive on the highway, so It's not right for you to drive and do traffic. I was even fighting with people ahead. So I didn't know follow traffic, you know. No more money on the highway. They are causing the traffic. The browser, what's your name? You didn't the Isaac. Isaac, then. To burn then. And so best and cocoon because your lens is. I saw my cocota, I mean cocota. You're quite funny, I saw Munya. I saw my enemy, and I am in one pool. Because can I say, I mean, Pianca and Abba. What would say, Pianca and Abba? Who's who's my yard found? I did not know Pianca, me Pianca and Ediba. My Pianca is the one who I'm in the Eba. I met my cotton shoe proud, I mean, the Gumu, including the new boo from Teacher was watching. Uh, well, um, those were some of the culprits of um, uh, the war against the discipline exercise we went the last time. I've had a couple of concerns. People, uh, you know, people's... Yeah, been, my heart goes out to you. Uh -huh. So people's hearts have gone out to the... Especially the taxi driver, you know. The thing he said, it, it, it bust my brain. I just had to walk out of the scene like mic drops. The guy was driving on the shoulder of the road. He was arrested and he claimed that the car has broken down, so he was pushing the car on the side. Meanwhile, he was behind the steering wheel, okay? So he doesn't have his license and his roadworthy has expired, so there is no license to retain. And so they had to tow the car away. I'm saying to Ben then, because when they tow the car, you are going to pay 200 for tow first before they pay them. You go to court and then they find you. And he said, uh -huh. I bet go go there and go corner. So long as he's paying the fine to the court and not into the pocket of the police, sort of like he's he's a hard guy and, and a lot of people are applauding him like he's a citizen, you know, and, and not a spectator and uh, I deaf my heart for him, you know. As for the others, the Uber driver and the other man, I wish them well. I have some update on Hadia for you, but hold on, I'll tell you much later. The there's this school in Accra, Bubuashi area, Hossa. That's Accra Academy. Uh -huh. hey. In less than two weeks, Accra Academy in Kwan, they managed to recall two infernos when some schools I know can't even afford just one. Po well, I want to say that uh, 
it's the same building like you said that gutted that was gutted by fire last two weeks and uh, all students were evacuated from the building Boy. but have you noticed that with all the fire outbreaks we are seeing most of them are state government institutions go just say. anyway talking of fire uh, you remember the large tax office of the Ghana Revenue Authority at Circle uh, that got gutted. It, it remains useless. After fire gutted, I think it was in December. Nobody knows when investigations will be done because Ghana, dear, <laughs> the moment you hear we have begun investigation, police have begun, the fire service have begun investigation, it's ongoing, my sister, <laughs> until the kingdom <laughs> come and pass and forget. But the good news is that the Ghana Revenue Authority, you know, they exceeded their revenue targets last year. That must be why the finance minister was seen displaying some dance moves recently. Those of you who are trying to see the collection, no shame on you. You see how he plays, they call it strategic placement. <laughs> now, even if you don't have enough reasons to dance like our finance minister did, remember that January upon all her guy guy you know, has been disgraced. <laughs> 